Greetings, welcome back to the Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel for a video on garden and orchard design. This isn't about how to execute some specific technique the way most of the videos on this channel are. This is a video about some ideas. And it was brought about, the idea behind this was brought about by a series of conversations I had with some different people on the idea of flowering trees versus fruiting trees and where one starts and the other stops. What I hope to do in this video is spur your creativity in your own landscape designs, both ornamental, edible, orchard, permaculture, whatever angle you're taking on this. I want to spur some creativity in your minds by blurring these definitions, hopefully to complete oblivion, right? Because, let's face it, everything which flowers is producing some sort of fruit. And every fruit produced once was a flower. So to call something a flowering apple versus an orchard apple is a little bit nonsensical. So let's dissect the words a little bit just to begin with. Most of the things which people call flowering were bred to be street trees. Okay, They were bred where the flowers were the primary selection, selective factor and they were very often bred to have very very small fruits often ornamental in their own right attractive to birds and hanging on the tree late in winter this is commonly done because people that are planting street trees in American culture anyway see fruit production as a negative they don't want to have to clean up all of that mess right so they're trying to breed non messy street trees but let's think about that for a second small fruit attractive to birds well there's a chicken crowing behind me and I bet you that chicken would love to eat these fruit as they drop on the ground in winter okay now I chose this tree to start out this conversation because this is a flowering crab apple this is a double flowering crab apple I don't know the variety name but it is a truly ancient tree it's very sentimental to myself and to my family this is outside the home where I grew up in Pennsylvania and uh, this tree just really puts on a show it has been overgrown pruned back ripped apart by ice grown back into its place overgrown again pruned back again many many times right this is a really old tree and a beautiful one and it is just such a tree bred for flowers very small fruits hang late into the winter attractive to birds would be great to plant near your chicken coop okay we're going to come back to this here a little, little bit later on but let's move and look at an orchard apple in full bloom so here we have an edible apple right i i honestly forget what variety this is i planted this tree for my family over a decade ago but i see flowers and i would defy you to tell me that this is not a flowering tree and that these flowers are not spectacularly beautiful here in its full bloom okay this is very typical of most of the orchard apples the ancestor of the of the modern orchard apple is malus Seversi, and you tend to have this red to pink bud opening up to a pale pink flower and that flower will fade to white this is very typical most the overwhelming majority of apples that you would buy to be an edible apple are going to have this type of flower so enjoy them and as you take these and you're thinking about how you're going to put together an orchard planting or a permacultural design or an edible landscape or whatever you're looking to do think about the beauty of these orchard fruits and find a way to showcase it now these orchard varieties have an advantage that the flowering varieties got to remember the air quotes because these words don't really mean much these flowering varieties don't have and that is that you can get them in a wide range of dwarfing characteristics you can have everything from a full-size tree to a super super dwarf little minute of a tree to a column or vertical tree and everything in between that's because of the use of different rootstocks to cram orchard fruits into different patterns so if you have a space where you want a flowering tree, seriously 
think about using one of these edible varieties, because I guarantee you will find a beautiful flowering specimen that you can cram into any space, any shape of space, just by choosing one that has the right dwarfing characteristics. That's an advantage you don't have with those flowering crabs, because they usually only come in one size. Take it or leave it, right? So consider these using them as a flowering variety. Now, as we go beyond the predominantly Malus Seversi, Malus Domestica um, clade within the apples, we find a lot of other things. We find a lot of other flower colors from absolutely pure white from bud to senescence to absolutely pure red from bud to senescence at every point along that gradient. We also find a lot of interesting fruit characteristics. A lot of these uh, wild species of apple are very tannic. That can be a bad thing if you just want to eat it out of hand, but that can be a very good thing if you want to make um, hard cider or cider vinegar, and that's your goal. Um, you have apples that will, you know, can impart traits for long-term storage, long persistence on the tree. That can extend your harvest season and your canning season. You have apples with pigmentation in the flesh, which can change the products you can make from them. And just for sort of an extreme, varying levels of pectin, uh, Malus coronaria, the wild crab apple here in the northeast, has so much pectin in the fruit, they are absolutely hard as little rock bullets, and you can smell the pectin holding the apple at arm's length, which can be great as a source of pectin for your jelly. So, again, we're thinking outside the box, we're embracing these other traits, and we're recognizing that there's more to an apple than fruit salad. So this is just one of those examples that I was talking about. This is a hybrid of the Malus domestica, Malus severse, depending on how you want to classify the domestic apple, it's a little complicated. Um, crossed with another species from Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, Malus Nizwalskiana. I am probably butchering that pronunciation. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> now, the Nizwalskiana is a really interesting crab apple. Got to put these air quotes in. It's a large fruited, very edible wild apple from the same corner of the world that brings us the domestic apple. The the steppes of Western Asia, Eastern Europe are a very arid region with a whole bunch of big old mountains pushed up. And when you get into the Western Chinese, Eastern um, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan region, that steppe is so dry, apples really can't persist in the lowlands, but they live up in highlands on those mountain ranges. So you have a lot of little separated island-like pockets of apples where the apple has been free to evolve in multiple directions. And there are some really interesting results, the domestic apple being one of them, and Nizwalskiana being another. Now what makes Nizwalskiana so fascinating is its hyperpigmentation. It has dark red flower buds and fully red blossoms for the entire duration of time that it's in bloom. This is where we get hybrids like this one this is called the um, firecracker crab apple or firecracker apple crab. Sometimes we'll sometimes put on these edible crab apples, <laughs> right? Weird word use. We're moving on. Um, you also get things like prairie fire flowering crab apple is another cross out of the same original species. But we're picking up this dark pigmentation in the flowers. We're picking up the bronzing in the leaves from the hyperpigmentation of the leaves. These will turn to full green as the season progresses, but they're putting out a lot of pigmentation here early on. That's the tree's natural suntan lotion to protect this young growth from the sun. And the apples that this produce will have red pigmentation, not just in the skin, but throughout the flesh. So you can make red apple sauce and other red apple products. Okay, so once again, just look at the beauty, even though this is a small tree, look at the beauty in these flowers. When you go shopping for trees, 
if you're looking for an ornamental tree, I would encourage you to go to the nursery periodically during the bloom season and just look these over and look at the blooms in the edible trees, right? You will find some real gems like this that are every bit as ornamental as the ornamental trees sitting with the edible trees. Give yourself the permission and freedom to take advantage of those opportunities. So I told you that we would come back to that first tree that I showed at the end of the video. And this is what I am pretty sure is a tree that is among its progeny. So I mentioned that the birds love eating the fruit from that um, little flowering crab apple outside of our kitchen window. And the birds have deposited some of those seeds. Why do I think that this is progeny of that? We're about 100 yards away, so it's certainly within range of, you know, bird pooing distance. And this is double flowered. That is the only double flowered tree anywhere around here. But it's, it's a lot pinker. It's a much darker flower, right? It still fades to white a little bit before full senescence of the flowers. But it's retaining the pink of the early buds for a much longer period of time. That is a Malisnidzwalskiana characteristic. The, the little sapling that I showed you in the previous clip is a recent purchase, i.e. a few days ago. So that pollen was not here, but I have found feral apples that have some of that red, fl red tinged flesh characteristic just in the landscape around here. And this somehow has picked up some pollen, which was expressing some of those genes. It's a spontaneous hybrid and a wonderful progeny from that first tree. And this is my last thought. Don't just stop with what is available at the nurseries. I would encourage you to do some of your own breeding and propagation. Apples are self-infertile. They need to have pollen from another genetically distinct individual in, either, in order to produce fertile seed. So if you have two apples where you kind of like the characteristics, but they're not all the way where you want to go, plant them beside each other, save some fruit, grow out the seed. Apples are very quick to flower from seed, usually, you know, like five to ten years. Not a real long wait time. Totally worth doing. So take those and evaluate what the offspring look like. Now I know that this was crossed with a more domesticated variety because the fruit on this tree are, oh, you know, size of a really big marble instead of these little teeny tiny blueberry sized things, okay? So it is a much larger fruit. They are extraordinarily tannic, but they hang on the tree all the way through February and March. Because of that, when I come and visit this tree in winter, when we're visiting my family, this is always has the snow beaten down by deer coming and looking for the latest drop. Again, that tannin content would be great if you're going for some apple cider vinegar. It would also be great um, for wildlife feed, for chicken feed, for uh, you know providing fruit for other forms of livestock. You could put these in a sheep pasture part of a broader wildlife, you know, animal management scheme. So again, think outside the box, not just with your initial purchases, but with what they might become five, ten years down the road when you start propagating from them. So I hope that this has given you some ideas. This isn't the end all be all to selecting the perfect fruiting or flowering tree for your landscape, but I hope that it makes you think think a little bit. Um, I'm only talking about apples here because that's what's in bloom at the moment and the big beautiful showy pictures that I could put in this video. But everything that I'm saying is also true of cherries. It's true of pears. It's true of apricots. It's true of plums. It's true of peaches, although the edible peaches really don't have the showiest of flower. But most of those are finished blooming at this point, but they present the same opportunities and they present opportunities at a different time of year. So I hope that 
as you're thinking through what you want to do with your own properties and landscapes and designs, that you will broaden your perspective a little bit and think about the usefulness of the flowering trees as well as the beauty of the edible orchard fruits. So if you've enjoyed this, I would be most grateful if you gave the video a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm loves when you do that, and I'm very grateful for that support. And I will see you next time here at Old Ways Rising Farm. Thank <laughs> you.